Hello cheapskaters, I'm Kath Armstrong, creator of the Cheapskates Club, where our goal is to live life debt free, cashed up and laughing. And that is a big hint to figuring out how we live the lifestyle we do on our income and our budget. If this is your first time visiting our channel, welcome. And if it's not, welcome back. We live life debt free, cashed up and laughing. And that's the goal of Cheapskates Club, to show you how you too can live life debt free, cashed up and laughing. Just recently, I was talking to a new cheapskater and he, yes, it's a he, said there was no way, absolutely no way we could possibly live the way we do on the budget that I've shared with you earlier this year. Well, folks, if you know me at all, and many of you do, you'll know I accepted the challenge and I quite happily spent a lot of time over a few days talking to him and showing him just how we live a rather extravagant lifestyle for a lot less than you would think. And it's simple. We paid off all debt and we save for what we want. Now, way back when disaster struck, and I'll put a link to that story in the description box, we made a conscious decision to ditch the stuff that isn't important to us so we have the cash to enjoy the things that are. Now, way back then, it was really simple food and a roof over our heads. But I've talked about this for years. It's even been the topic of a couple of the current affairs segments. Ditching what's not important so you can enjoy what is. We found that a lot of what our money was going on wasn't really important to us. It was a, yeah, either or, we don't really care. And yes, we like eating out, but it's not the eating out that we enjoyed when we drilled down into why. It was the company. So we changed things and we started inviting people to our home for a meal or a barbecue or to join us for a picnic. And we saved a lot of money and we still have fun. In fact, I think we had more fun. Now, we still enjoy good food, but more importantly, we still enjoy good company. And it's actually more enjoyable because we're not worried about parking or babysitters, not that we need those anymore, or taking too long over our meal and being asked to leave the restaurant. And that has happened quite a few times before. Eating out, well, that's just one of the things we ditched. And it's one of the things we don't really miss. And yes, we do still go out to eat, just not every week every weekend every night perhaps once maybe twice a year and when we do we really enjoy the occasion because it is rare and it is a genuine treat now we live in a nice suburb and while our home is never going to make vogue living and that's perfectly fine with me it's comfortable and it's almost the way we like it almost the way we want it to be it's a work in progress we do things as we have the cash. We have two cars. Now, that's not strictly necessary, but we have the money to pay for them. And when we bought my car last year, we'd saved up and paid cash. We also paid cash for our four-wheel drive and for the car before that and the car before that. We believe the only money we should ever borrow is for a mortgage. And then it should be the least possible amount and be paid off as quickly as possible being debt free is a very powerful feeling there is no stress when the bills come in interest rates go up yeah doesn't worry us we don't have debt my point is if we want something we save up for it and after we've done our research we pay cash for it and we own it we don't have credit cards and no doesn't matter what you think the rewards are not really rewards you pay for those so-called rewards even if you think you don't you may well believe that you are getting something for nothing but rest assured you are not the cost of those um, so-called rewards 
is covered in the cost of having and using those credit cards, in the exorbitant interest rates. Even if you say you pay it off every month, you, there is still a fee. There is a cost. We have a written budget and we stick to it. That's how we can afford to drive a new car, how we can afford to have a new camper, live in a nice suburb, go on nice long holidays and have regular weekends, uh, sorry, have regular weekends away. Now this year, our budget has been trimmed and we've survived just fine. How did we do it? Well, we track our spending, we track our bills, we track the cost of fuel and we stick to our budget. If it's not in the budget, then we need to rethink what can we do to make it fit or do we really need it? Is there something that we have that will fit, do that job? And I'm an ingredients shopper because ingredients give me options. Ingredients make a lot of different dishes. A packet makes one, maybe two dishes if you know how to substitute and they cost a lot more than raw ingredients. That saves us a lot of money. We also grow a lot of what we eat. Yes, we have to buy seeds for some things, but I'm learning to save seeds. Yes. So eventually that cost will be almost nothing. And with the rising cost of fruits and vegetables and the predicted shortages of potatoes and other staples this summer, having a productive garden means we eat well for almost nothing. And the excess is preserved so we can eat well in the future for almost nothing too. Now, on that note, I'm an ingredients canner too, other than some soups and stews that we eat regularly. Again, because ingredients give me options. For me, shopping isn't just a trip to one supermarket where everything is bought. Shopping is spread around to take advantage of sales and deals and buying in bulk, true bulk, not that 1.2 kilos that supermarkets call bulk. If it's cheaper, saves us a lot of money too. We shop around for big ticket items, booking not just for the best price, but for the best quality and value for our money. And then we wait for sales. We go in with cash and we are prepared to haggle for a better deal or, if we can find it, happily buy used if it will do the job. There is nothing wrong with buying used. Another thing that helps us live a more extravagant lifestyle on our budget is sticking to the list. If it's not on the list, we don't buy it. It can go on the list for the next shopping trip and we may buy it then, but we don't buy it if it's not on the list. And I shop once and that's it until the next shopping day. No popping in for top ups every day or so. Those top ups can easily double your grocery bill really quickly without you even realising it. I cook at home, or should I, I should say we cook at home. Fish and chips are on the meal plan. I take the fish from the freezer and I crumb it. I peel the potatoes to make chips and I cook them for our dinner. Pizza on Thursday night is always homemade. We tend to make the pizza bases in bulk. I like to do 12 at a time and freeze them. And doing that saves over, yeah, over $35 over buying them. And that's just the pizza bases. I have no idea how much it would cost on it, um, save over home delivery. Another thing we do is every year we review our utility bills and insurances and shop for a better deal. Yes, it takes time. And yes, it can be a little out of my comfort zone, especially. But it always pays off. We also live on the 10-10-80 rule. Save 10%, give 10% and live off the remaining 80%. It works. It might take some time to get used to if you're in the habit of spending 100%, but it works. And best of all, you are automatically building savings. We can live the way we do on our income because we are in control of our money. It does not control us. We know where it goes and we know when it goes because we choose where it goes and when it goes. 
if you're struggling with this, start at the beginning. Write up a spending plan. Include all your income and all your expenses, not just the big ones, but all of them. Then be ruthless. If there are expenses in that plan that aren't essential to life, think hard about keeping them. Preferably, you'll ditch them because they're not really important. Things like manicures. You can do your own nails because manicures aren't essential. Cut them from the budget and see how much money that frees up because you're going to use that money to pay down your debt. I suggest you start by adding it to your smallest debt and get it paid off really quickly. Then take that whole debt payment and add it to the next smallest debt and get that one paid off really quickly. Rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat until you have nothing but your mortgage. And then you are going to throw all that money as extra payments on your mortgage to get it paid down really quick. Seven interest rate rises this year alone. That's a really smart thing to do. And it's not forever. Once you're debt free, you can go get a manicure if you want it because you will have the money to pay for it. You see what I mean? You can live on a tighter than tight budget for a short time, well, even if it's five years, because in the grand scheme of a lifetime, five years is nothing and very doable when you know that the next 60 years are going to be financially secure, stress-free stress and fun because you are debt-free and cashed up. You will be laughing. We can afford to live the lifestyle we do on our income because we plan. We are aware of what we spend and we only spend on the things that are important to us. What we have, we own. We don't use credit. And that's how we can live the way we do. It works. Before I go, thank you so much for watching all the way through and for subscribing. Feel free to leave a comment. I read every comment and I do my best to answer any questions that you may have if you leave them in the comments. Now, if you could help me, I'd appreciate it with three simple things. Like, subscribe and share. These three things help our channel grow and be recognised more easily. And the easier it is to find us, the easier it is for me and you to spread the message that it is not only okay to live life debt-free, cashed up and laughing, but it is absolutely possible even in today's crazy world. I'll be back very soon with another video to save you money, time and energy. But until then, happy cheapskating, everyone.